Hi, this is Shadi, and today we are discussing Kashi Wazaki. So, many of you constantly ask me to cover his judo, and of course I will. It's one of the best, and if there's one judo that I truly aspire to have is Kashi Wazaki's judo. I myself love the groundwork and also Sutemi Waza. So, Kashi Wazaki is very interesting. Why? Because... He was in the early 1980s, you can see a lot of his fights, and maybe it was the rules, but it allowed far more work on the ground than maybe other generations like the 90s and the early 2000s. But him being a contemporary of Yamashita and Saito, you would think you'd see Sayonage and Uchimata and these very destructive throws coupled with good newaza, which is why not, but his whole judo, especially as a Japanese, is far different than everyone in his generation. So what I will do today is discuss some of the best aspects that I see in his newaza. Look up Kashiwazaki newaza. You will find uh, a very long video, well over two hours. Many people re-uploaded it and you can just watch and you can learn so much. So. The first thing I want to discuss is the uh, Niju Garami or what you guys call half guard. So it's very difficult to actually plow your foot. It's simply because of the heel. The heel with the curve, it's almost like a very strong hook and it's almost very difficult to uh, remove. So there is, however, something even the, some of the best black belts don't do and that is uh, I'll, I'll tell you later, but first what most people do is push the legs away with their hands and at the same time the free leg is kicking away and so you're pushing all these things. So what that does actually is it tightens their legs far more when you are kicking them away from you when they are down. The, the ability of your partner to close their legs even tighter becomes stronger. So the trick is, and this is something uh, De Montfaucon, Olympic medalist, taught me. He says, when you actually want to free your leg, you actually pull the pants towards you. Because as your legs are closer to your chest, the ability to close them tightly becomes very slim. And so with the other leg, now you can actually kick away and free your leg. But a lot of people, I just see them push away the thigh and kicking with the other leg, trying to free their leg. And that's not how that works. It's actually the opposite. You have to pull at least the upper leg towards you, which makes the tightening of the thighs far weaker. And there you can actually free your leg. I'm sure many of you are frustrated with this position. So the key is to actually pull the pants towards you, particularly the upper leg. And that's how you actually get your leg loose. So this is a very tricky one. It's basic, yet it's very effective on the defensive part. So uh, next is his um, Hadaka Jime or naked choke. So you see he has a very brutal one. Now in judo, you can easily find yourself in this position. Um, you can hook your legs in and then from there, you actually, from under the armpits, so they don't realize the threat on their neck, what you can do is actually flatten them out underneath their arm while you are extending your legs. And then from there, you go to the neck and just completely annihilate them. I don't know if this is, if this is illegal today, given the spine is bending, but, uh, and especially since you are sitting on it, so it can be, or maybe a penalty, I'm not entirely sure, but nonetheless, it is very hardcore uh, rear naked choke. This next one here is a transition from uh, the arm bar to a triangle choke. You see Pedro and everyone teaching it. Kashi Wazaki was the first. So here you actually, as they are uh, bridging, you get the leg underneath them and from there you get your strangle. Brilliant. And also you can get arm locks from this position. It will be a Sankaku Gatame. So um, it's very important to note that um, in this here, you actually go for the 
pull that's why they bridge so they can actually try to follow you and from there you sneak your leg from underneath them so the, illu the whole thing about groundwork is that you want to give them the illusion that they are getting some type of progress and from there you get your win another one here is this type of triangle but it's for the arm to actually release and you tap it's still sankaku gatame not juji gatame so next let's take a look at his guard i did find his guard very interesting open guard is your best friend no matter what you learn i know the the close guard is very offensive but open guard is your best friend trust me and here you see the many ways that people will try to get past you and of course the pummeling drill is very important but here you see um, something a lot of people do when they get caught in double under or over and under pass you have to get a cross grip and then pull diagonally towards the arm that's trying to pummel its way into your chest and from there you close it that way their ability to rotate and go around you just it's finished so and here from there you have a multitude of attacks like this one here the Hiza Gatame or uh, Omoplata and again so these little tricks this is what I really love about incredibly advanced Neiwaza in Japan is that they stick to their basics but yet the detail and the refinement that they go the extent that they go to refine their basics is incredible and that's what I truly love so um, this next one here is you have a someone trying to doing a, a double under and then from there you lace the arm and then here you create a frame and then you flatten them out it's brilliant it's something it's something i don't know if i if it is present in jujitsu please let me know but it's something that you rarely see again this two hour or over two hour instructional you can easily find it on youtube just type kashiwazaki newaza and you will learn just so much so here you pummel in and then you are crushing the arm at the same time and you can get an arm lock here um as you flatten them out here look you can uh do like a like your car the, the stick of your car and the manual stick of your car to the front and this is what it's called a te gatame so uh, this next one here um, if you are almost in half guard and they are passing you what you can do is get the leg underneath them and lift up so, so a lot of people try to do this they try to hook as if they want to go for a triangle but their leg is stuck and they cannot and their their head is low so what you can do in this position is actually cut the leg underneath the far leg and rotate them so this is great so what does truly um, make me wonder about his judo is his choice of throws you would think as a great champion like him a japanese judoka you would think he would be great in kochigari seoenage uchimata all these throws that the japanese are known for but no his choice is just simply limited to sutemi look up all his competition all his tutorials he teaches tomoenage um he teaches hikikomi gaishi he teaches uh sumi gaishi uh, ukiwaza just sutemi throws and great destructive throws that will immediately get an ippon i know people will say it's just to to go to the ground no the way he commits himself to them he actually throws people and so maybe at the time i'm not sure but at the time scoring was difficult you saw that tomo and at, at the beginning and here in front of you that was just a coca so maybe the reliance on the Neiwaza was far more important at the time. So if you have anything to add, let me know. This was Shelly. Thank you for listening.